Hey guys, it's Pepsi T98. I'm coming to you guys tonight with very different content than what I'm used to posting. Um, tonight, we're gonna talk about how to score well on your step two exams, how to do well. Um, and by well, I mean um, score, you know, really high 250s, 260s, 270s and above. I was fortunate enough to score a 270 on my step two exam. Never saw it coming. Um, I want to, you know, kind of inspire you guys to really like reach for the stars, um, set high goals for yourself um, so that you can be able to, you know, score really well on your exams because it is possible. I was never the best standardized test taker back in high school or in college. Throughout med school, I've learned um, different skills that I think have helped me um, to do relatively well. And so I want to start off by putting the disclaimer that I'm going to speak strictly on my experience. Everyone has a different experience, okay? I'm gonna tell you exactly what I did, um, but just because you follow every single thing that I do does not necessarily mean you have the same exact score as me. You, more, you may score higher than me, you may score lower. Um, so this is just strictly off of my experience, but I also want to give you some principles that you can follow to um, do well in general on step two. So first and foremost, I want to say that um, I think the biggest thing that people tend to underestimate is the power of support. I had a lot of support in medical school. And I still do, I'm finishing up fourth year, but throughout all my four years, um, I've had my financial help. Um, I was at home with my family. Uh, I've had, you know, family support. Um, I'm also single without kids. I don't have many responsibilities outside of studying for school. So I think that's a huge thing. Um, so having social support, um, I'm also a spiritual person. I believe in God. I'm a Christian and I've had support from my church. I truly believe in the power of prayer, um, praying to God and God answering prayers. Um, and, you know, also taking breaks for your mental and emotional wellness. I was hanging out with my friends during my dedicated step two study time every now and then. And I think that really contributed to my wellness overall. And I think when you have good wellness, you're able to focus more on your studying and you're able to ultimately do well when you are yourself well. I would always take Friday evening to Saturday evening off. Um, I had no studying time, no working on any academic things, just to rest, relax, hang out with friends, hang out with family. And I think that helped. It sounds nerve wracking at first. You may feel like, you're wasting your time, but it really is not a waste. It helps re-energize you. And as I said, when you feel well, you're able to focus and concentrate better and um, you're able to do better. And so it doesn't necessarily have to be a full day. You yourself should figure out what would work best for you. Second kind of principle is doing well on your shelf exams, doing well um, on your surgery, OBGYN, uh, psychiatry, family medicine. Um, I mean, and it's okay if you don't do the best on one shelf exam, that's not gonna necessarily determine your step two score. But I think in general, the better you do on your third year shelf exams, the better you probably do on step two. So kind of building that foundation for yourself is really important. I was board prepping, quote unquote board prepping since, um, you know, the beginning of my third year all the way to fourth year when I took um, step two. So I was kind of using board prep material to study for my MBMEs. And actually what I would do at the start of each new third year clerkship rotation, I would look up online on YouTube, like how to succeed in so-and-so uh, clerkship. And so I would see different videos and I could kind of put some links um, in the description below of like different people on YouTube who I would watch um, kind of at the beginning of the rotation who give me like kind of good uh, ideas about what resources to even use for each rotation because it depended on what specialty I was rotating during third year, but it would be a mixture of different books um, as well as UWorld. I use UWorld throughout third year um, and in the beginning of fourth year leading up to my step two exam. Um, and also kind of different uh, third-party resources like like Boards and Beyond, um, 
mostly boards and beyond online med ed so those are some of the main things i use you really want to make sure that when you're prepping for each shelf exam you have a good routine and what i would do is um, for each rotation i would you know do my best uh, to stay focused and stay present during the clinical part of the rotation itself so when i got home I would go and do practice questions. I would do about um, a block, at the very least, one block of practice questions a day, depending on the rotation. Um, for surgery, it was different. I actually did my one block or two blocks of 40 questions of you world before the rotation itself, because by the time I got home after surgery, I was just exhausted. I was too tired to do any questions or to review any questions. And with each question, I read the prompts carefully, highlight the pertinent negatives and pertinent positives of each question stem. For example, I would uh, highlight um, the demographics of the patient, their age, their sex, because those are pretty important. Those can uh, kind of guide your differentials. I would also highlight um, you know, their, their time courses of their symptoms, are they having more acute symptoms? You know, within 12 hours, they're presenting with nausea and vomiting, or is it more chronic symptoms where they're having nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea, or fevers for like months? Um, so the time course of symptoms also matters. I would also look at, um, you know, what are their lab values? Do they have leukocytosis? Do they have anemia? Um, or do, you have, do they have elevated light pace, you know, signaling you towards pancreatitis? Like, what are their pertinent positives? What are their pertinent negatives? Do they have a normal physical exam? Um, or pertinent positives, do they have rebound or guarding on their physical exam? I would make sure I highlight only the pertinent things. And I feel like a lot of people can either highlight um, not enough information or highlight too much. Before looking at any answer choices, I highly recommend uh, when you see the question that they're asking you, like, for example, what is the diagnosis or what is the next step of management or what is the diagnostic, best diagnostic method, try to think of the answer yourself. Because I think if you skip to the answer choices, you can get confused. Um, so try to think of the answer yourself and then choose, and then you can go to the answer choices and kind of rule things in and out. And then going to the answer choices, you want to really make sure that you um, have evidence for and against why or why not you're picking a certain answer choice. Whether it's Kaplan practice questions or your world practice questions, I highly recommend doing them timed because all of your exams are gonna be timed. You're never gonna have a time when you're doing like a tutor mode sort of exam for boards. You're gonna have only a certain allotted amount of time. And so you wanna make sure that from the very beginning, you are able to um, have good, efficient time management and able to think uh, of uh, kind of things quickly. Also, you don't wanna be spending hours on one, any one question. So good time allotment is important and I highly recommend doing things times. The night before every clerkship shelf exam, I would watch Divine Intervention, Emma Holiday, and Dr. High Yield uh, board review videos on that specific rotation shelf topic um, just to kind of for one give myself a break from doing questions but also to kind of passively uh, review the topics that were kind of uh, common with you know throughout whatever rotation it was I will say that some of their videos um, can range from like an hour to two hours long but I would passively listen to them. I could be doing my laundry and listening to them talk and I would do them, I'd play their videos on two times speed in the background and I would barely ever rewind if I didn't catch something. I just knew that I didn't have to know every single detail. I just wanted to kind of get through the gist of the topics that would be coming up on my shelf exam. I think that those three people's videos um, really helped solidify things the night before each clerkship exam. Um, in terms of timing, you need to figure out the timing of when your step two exam is going to be. Do you think based on how you've been doing on your shelves, do you think you need only two weeks to study for step two or do you think you need uh, five months? So figuring out the timing ahead of time will not only um, help set you up for success in terms of how much content you need to go through, but also, you know, scheduling an exam date because that's important. You don't want to waste your money um, spending on an exam that's either too far out or too close um, for you. 
And so what I did is after I was done with my last shelf, which was around last April, I decided that I want to use from May to July to study for step two. Um, and I want to take my exam at the end of July. And, and that's what I did. I had from May to July for dedicated study time. And um, I actually did an elective during May, an elective that kind of required me to be working from like nine to five every day. And I was also very exhausted at the end of the day. And I just felt like studying at the end of the day just wasn't working for me. So I would wake up early um, almost every day for that 30 day elective. And I would st try to get in at least two to four hours of studying before my shift. So that, yes, that meant waking up at like, 4 a.m. and getting to the campus on time to review questions before it started. And I lived off of a lot of coffee during that time, but that was what I found the most helpful for me. After my one month elective that ended, that was from May to June, from Ju June to July, um, I had a step two course that my school was offering. Um, it was a lecture-based course and uh, different faculty experts from whatever specialty or would come in would kind of review content with us and would also go through board style questions with us, which I found really helpful because it allowed for us to ask questions right on the spot and go through questions together as a class. And so if your school is offering you a step two board course, especially if it's free, um, it worked for me and I highly recommend it. It's not for everyone. I ended that course the day before my step two exam. We had the class, I believe it was um, a two to four hour long class in the morning. And so af like in the afternoons, we'd be free. I'd use like, for example, from noon to eight or 9 p.m. when my library closed, I would use that time to go through um, my you know uh, practice questions and review each and every single one of those questions and i'd ask myself why i got each question wrong and why i got each question right and why every answer choice was wrong and why every answer choice was right i would read through the full explanations that you world or Kaplan or what have you was giving me um and i would take notes take very brief bullet pointed notes on the overall concept that the question was trying to get at um, and I would never really review the notes. I would just literally write them down for muscle memory, for kinesthetic memory. Um, and I found that as I went on and, you know, did more and more practice questions, I was still remembering what I had written down in, you know, uh, previous practice question sessions. I did, you know, those blocks, you wrote or Kaplan blocks for about five days out of the week. And I reviewed every single one of those 40 question blocks um, and I would make sure I review every single question before I would go on to the next practice block. During my eight weeks of dedicated studying time, um, each of those weeks, once a week, I would do a full length practice exam, um, whether that was from Kaplan or UWorld or, uh, or Amboss. I think Amboss also might offer a free one. Um, and I did not spend money on anything except for UWorld. I only paid for UWorld. All the other resources I did were like f free trials. I believe UWorld gives you two um, full length practice exams. And I would use that one day out of the week, which was usually a Sunday to do the exam and go through the whole exam. I know it sounds a lot, I know it sounds intimidating, but it's definitely worth your time to do that because you're really, getting into the meat of what you're going to be doing which is you're going to like your step two exam is going to be a huge full length exam um and so i find it helpful to go through every single question by the time dedicated came around um i had to resort to other resources because i didn't want to reset my q bank because i just felt like if i reset my u world q bank then I may just be tricking myself into thinking I know a certain answer to a certain question and I just know it because I remember, you know, that I got it wrong or got it right before resetting my QBank. So I decided not to do any resets. Some people do that and it works for them. I decided not to. I decided to use um, Amboss. Um, Amboss has some free practice questions. I don't know if it's for a dedicated period of time or if it's for only certain times of the year, but um, Kaplan also has some free practice questions. I believe they have thousands of free step two practice questions and I would highly recommend getting on that. Um, they're, they're different from your world sometimes. They're a little bit more uh, detail oriented and I found them more difficult than some UWorld world practice questions, but they were also pretty good in my opinion. 
and uh, Kaplan, I believe, also has some diagnostic exams or some free full-length full exams as well. If I had like questions that really got me stumped, where I really did not understand, I would use like Boards and Beyond or Online MedEd, and I would kind of review those concepts that I really just felt like I needed to relearn. Yeah, guys, um, I know this was a very long video. Just to recap, number one for me was support. Um, support from God, support from family members, from friends. Um, relaxation, taking one day off a week just to not study, not have your mind on school, not have your mind on step. Setting that foundation for yourself of doing well on your shelves, adequately prepping yourselves on each of your shelves to set you up for success for your step two exam. Knowing how long you want to take for your dedicated study time, um, whether or not you will also be doing elective rotations while you study for step two. Um, scheduling a date, setting up a schedule or routine for yourself of doing practice questions and practice full length exams throughout your dedicated study time. And again, for me, my setup was one day out of the week, do a full length exam um, and review all the questions. The other five days out of the week, do practice exams or practice blocks from New World or Kaplan and review those questions. And then one day out of the week, relaxing. And so guys, I really hope that that was helpful. Um, this is my first time doing this. Um, I'm nervous, but I'm also excited because I really want everyone to succeed and do well. And it's very possible to do well on these exams. So please let me know if you have any questions or concerns in the comments below. And let me know how I can improve um, on the next video I may do. All right. Thank you guys. Have a good night.